Welcome to the League of Visionaries podcast by Yazi Media. The League of Visionaries podcast is your place to meet visionaries, professionals, entrepreneurs, and other thought leaders with a visionary message to share. This podcast is for you if you too are a visionary driven by a deeper purpose in your work, your play, and your investments. I'm your host, Marie-Therese LaRue, the media strategist with soul and founder and owner of Yazi Media Virtual Media House. Connect with this League of Visionaries as we explore the power of purpose and how to bring it to the world through your message. This season of the League of Visionaries podcast is brought to you by Totally Morpheus, creators of the Egg 3 Leadership Assessment. It's fast, it's fun, it's free, and it points the way to your living leadership legacy. The Media Kit really brings together a lot of the principles. If you've been following the Media Strategy for Visionaries events, we've been going from month to month. Every month, we are building up a new skill, a new piece of the puzzle that you can use for bringing more media attention to what you do. We started out with an overall media strategy for visionaries. Then we moved on to uh, beginning to get media appearances through media features and other um, uh, places where you can be. We looked at podcasts and podcast guesting so that you don't have to start your own blog. You don't have to start your own podcast. You can get all the benefits while somebody else does all the work and uh, you can be their star featured guest, which is a lovely way to break into that world. Decide if it's worthwhile for you to have your own podcast, but, but why go to all the trouble if somebody else is already doing it and you can do them a favor by appearing on their podcast. So that is all very, very exciting. Now, um, for our session today, I, I know a lot of us have met before or we've crossed paths before, but it might be a good idea to start out with a quick overview of where we're at. And before we start, you'll see that you are probably muted on entry, and that is really just to keep our sound clear. And I'm a fine one to speak because the landscapers have decided that if there's an event happening on Zoom, I don't know where they get my schedule, but they know exactly when it's time to come and trim hedges. So hopefully they're all on, on tea break until 11. I'm going to start having cake delivered to those guys whenever I have a meeting. <laughs> Um, so uh, in, in the media strategy for visionaries, oh wait, let's do this in style. I'm going to share my screen and please bear with me if there are any surprises today because this is a, a new system for me. I'm on two screens for the first time in a presentation, so hopefully everything is going to go according to plan. You should see on your screen, not me, but a uh, nice big red magnetic media kit. Is that what you're seeing? Can you give me a thumbs up? Fantastic. Thank you, Libby. Thanks, Corne. Thanks, Kendra. Thank you, Kalnisha. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. So um, I also just want to take a look that we have everybody in our room. One moment, please. Mm. Okay, we should all be in the room. There we are. Right. So this session is all about creating your magnetic media kit and how to attract opportunities with this. And uh, this is one in a session of the Media Strategy for Visionaries by Yazi Media Events. So you'll notice that more or less once a month, towards the middle or the end of the month, we, uh, here in South Africa, it's crazy with public holidays this month. So we're not going to next week because I know everybody's going to be in uh, uh, dimmer mode around us. So that's why we're having this one this week, but it's usually the last week of the month. And every month we look at one theme of how to build your visionary media strategy. Um, we've gone through theme by theme, starting with very broad topics. And now we're beginning to zoom in. And this idea of the media kit is one that can serve you well, whether you're building your personal brand as an expert, or you're building a startup, or you already have a company that is in place. And if you have both, you're going to find a media kit can do magic for both of you. 
So um, as we move through to that, you have probably worked out, if you know how the webinar game works, that there's no such thing as a free lunch. And in a, an open session like this, somebody's going to try and sell you something. So let's get it out of the way. I won't try to sell you anything, but I will be inviting you to the Yazi Media Media Strategy Mafia. This is a trusted insider circle of media support where you can meet other uh, experts like you, other founders, people who have a big mission, visionaries who have an important message to share with the world through their personal brand, through their work, or through their business, or their startup. And uh, all these people get together in what I call a mafia meeting. Now, it's not the kind of mafia where we go out and beat up people. It's the kind of mafia where we have a, a good circle of trust and uh, everybody has a chance to build their own business, to start to build their voice and their message within this circle of trust. Um, so after every Media Strategy for Visionaries open event, which usually happens on a Wednesday, the next day, that evening, there is a Media Strategy Mafia meeting, which is a masterclass where we dive deeper into the how of doing exactly what you heard about. So for example, today, you learn all about how to make use of your um, magnetic media kit so that you can get better media opportunities. But tomorrow night, you learn how to build it. So you're going to get, be getting wonderful open resources in this session. But at the end of our time today, I will share with you the link to join the Media Strategy Mafia. And if you want to give it a try, your very first month is free of charge. So there's no obligation. You can try it for a month and see, does this work for you? Is it something that sits well with you? We have the masterclass, the first session. The next week after, we have an implementation session where you can very simply jump in and maybe work on your media kit together with the support of everybody who's there on that evening. And the next week, we have a Q&A session where you can ask any media strategy questions you have. And the week after that, we have another implementation session. If there are five Thursdays in a month, then uh, you get the fifth Thursday off to do what you please, which might be media strategy or just taking the evening off to celebrate. But you will get four live sessions. If you can't attend a live session, there are recordings of the masterclasses and the Q&As that you can access anytime. But for the implementation sessions, those are only available live just to give you a little bit of backup as you're jumping in. And if you have questions about this, there'll be more uh, opportunity to discuss that in the Q&A at the end of our session today, and you'll also be receiving a link. So in case you were wondering if there's a catch, that's the catch. And now let's go take a look at your visionary media strategy and how you can make use of your media kit. But first of all, let's take a look at what exactly is a media kit. Here's a little story, and I'm suddenly thinking, man, I wish I had a photograph with me. Way back in the 1950s, when, as we all know, everything was still in black and white, my grandfather was a diplomat, and he was stationed first in Paris, where my mother was born and my aunt um, had her first years of life. And then they moved over to New York, where they stayed in New York State, and they lived in an old castle, <laughs> would you believe it? And one of the things that my grandfather had to do as a South African diplomat in the 50s was to try and remedy South Africa's terrible reputation in the world, because we just made some pretty nasty political moves, and the whole world was against the country. So his job was to try and convince people to still have faith in South Africa and to still believe in what we could offer, and very importantly, to still invest. And to make this possible, he, and, and this was especially interesting because he, in his heart, was very deeply opposed to the regime of the day. So, but he really loved the country. So here he was 
battling these two sides where he really believed in a democratic South Africa and yet he wanted to promote the country so that there could be more international interests that could push us in the direction of democracy. But politics aside, what he did from day to day, apart from wearing a very snazzy uh, fedora hat and uh, smoking very classy cigarettes and wearing tweed jackets to look really impressive, he would go out and share his media kit, South Africa's media kit with the world. So when a publication like the New York Times was looking for information about South Africa, they could always find what do they need to know about this country. And what would go into the press kit was all the information to show them why South Africa is worth investing in. Things like our amazing climate, our amazing diverse population, our incredible resources that we have in this country. So this media kit would show people what all the facts and statistics are about South Africa. Now a country has a pretty fat media kit. As a small company, a small business, or a personal brand, you probably won't have that many things to put in your media kit. And nowadays, it doesn't have to be a file with a couple of brochures in it. Today, you can do it digitally. So the media kits that we have today are very often a two-page offering, or usually, uh, even for a company, it might be up to six pages, just saying who you are, what you do, and what makes you so exceptional, why you should be interviewed and featured, and why people should collaborate with you. And we'll be taking a look at a few examples as we go through our session today. So that's the what. The media kit is really something you can put in a journalist, a reporter, or a TV producer's hands. And nowadays, a podcaster, a blogger, a vlogger, etc. Or even, and uh, for, for those of you who are creating content, here's a good tip, even a sponsor. So why should all those people invest in you? Well, when they can see everything that is in your media kit, they can see, well, this is somebody we want to work with. They have so many followers on these social media platforms, or they have these qualifications, or they have this um, prominence out in the world. So that is what convinces them that you are worth working with. And if you are, for example, a speaker or you are an author, you can also include that information here because all those things feed in to what you are uh, doing and what you have to offer. So this is all very, very exciting. And that is really what your media kit does. But for us nowadays, it will probably be a two-page PDF document with a fantastic photo of you and all your facts and statistics, a short bio so that nobody ever gets it wrong. If you've ever been featured in the media, even if it's something like the local paper, and they suddenly spell your name wrong, or they get the facts wrong, or they jumble that slogan that is so important to you, that can be catastrophic for your brand, or it can, at, at the best, it's probably going to confuse people that they don't have the information that they need. The media kit helps them get the facts straight, and of course, sell them on featuring you. So that's what's in your media kit. But why does it matter? Well, you can do perfectly fine without a media kit. The thing is, that media kit does one thing for the world out there, and it does another thing for the world in here. It really helps us to understand what we have to offer. And putting together something like a media kit really gets that summary there. Those of you who are in the media strategy mafia have been wrapping your heads and your tongues and your pencils around that elevator pitch. The first thing that you say when somebody says, so what do you do? And isn't it amazing how many times, and let me know in the chat or raise your hand, if you ever experienced this, that somebody asks you what you do and suddenly you haven't got a clue. Has that happened to you? 
<laughs> especially for those of us right I so relate I so relate for those of us who have many talents and many passions or who are in a transition or we're still kind of making up our mind what is it that you're going to say what is that punchy thing that's going to say it so your media kit is a great way to bring all of that together now, if you already have this content on your website, for example, or in your LinkedIn profile, it's actually all there. The big challenge is just to bring it together in that media kit. Why does it matter? So you're going to convince other people, like my grandfather did with a very hard sell of selling South Africa at a time when the country was in political turmoil and convincing people that it's still a good place to invest, because if they invest, Things can change. But you have a, a, a much easier thing to sell than, than a politically uh, tormented country. You have got an amazing brand behind you, whether it's the person in your skin or the company or the um, organization that you are creating. You've got an easy sell in there. So that is what's going to, that's why it matters to other people. But inside your head, when you put that media kit together, things start to go. And you start to say to yourself, wow, I'm someone who should be taken seriously. And very often in sessions like these, many people say in the session and some only come and say after the session, you know, one of the biggest problems I face is not doing the work. It's believing in myself and believing that I really have something to offer. So your media kit is a beautiful way. Yes, it's a crutch. It's not, it, it doesn't stand in for the genuine self-belief and genuine self-esteem. But just like when you break your leg and you walk with a crutch until you're stronger, it's a crutch that can help to make you stronger as you formulate what it is that you have to offer. So the why of your media kit goes to both the outside world, the media, who can then take you seriously because they can see exactly what you do and they can get their facts straight and they can be convinced that you're worth working with and staying connected with. And also what's inside your precious, valuable head so that you get your own facts straight and build up your confidence and see why you are worth working with. There's another interesting thing that good journalists do, and I'm in the process of connecting with many journalists uh, that I am inviting to an event that's happening next week. Now, this event is for a client, and I'm finding um, over the past years, I've been collecting, collecting, collecting the information of different journalists um, as I've seen them on different platforms, or I read one of their articles, or I um, see that they're looking for sources, even when I don't have a story, I tend to add them to a little spreadsheet that I have that says, what publication do they work for? What's their name? Where can I find them? What's their beat? And if you don't speak journalese or journalistes, uh, the beat is the, the topics that they cover. And uh, then also including all their links, their email, if they give it, their phone number, if they give it, you'll be amazed how many people give that. But I'd say, don't just call them out of the blue, maybe text them first. But um, all these journalists, oh, and another little one is what articles they've written so that when you connect with them, you don't just say, hi, I've got a story for you. You say, hi, I loved your story about, right? So you have a, a touch point that you can connect with them on. So in, in preparing for this incredible event next week, I suddenly realized how many media contacts I have because I've been building up a media list. Good journalists build up a source list. So if they don't have a story about what you do right now, when you connect with them and you say, by the way, here's my media kit, hold on to it for when you have a story or you need an expert or you need a source in my field, and reach out to me then, then if they're organized, and many journalists aren't, I'd, I'd say be very, very warned. And, and nowadays, the bloggers and the podcasters and the vloggers are actually more organized than the press journalists. It's an interesting thing to watch. But if, they, if they're doing it, their job well, they're going to hold on to your media kit. And when there's an opportunity, they're going to get back to you. 
So whatever your specialization is, when the journalists, the reporters, the, the I want to say the bloggers, the bloggers, the vloggers, and the podcasters all um, have access and they know that you're there, then when they have that gap, when they have that long weekend coming up and they want to take time off, or when they suddenly need a source, they know who to turn to. And why is that good for you? Well, they have your audience. They have your clients. When they cite you as an expert source, you don't have to go around blowing your own trumpet. They're the ones who are calling you the expert. And that can be priceless. This is not the same as advertising where you put an ad in the paper or you put an ad on Facebook and tomorrow you have 10 new clients. It's a much slower process, but it's one that holds much more power. And you never know when those people will find you, especially nowadays, because um, as we've mentioned in previous sessions before, if you appear in a newspaper, you're probably going to be cleaning windows tomorrow. Like that story is going to be cleaning somebody's windows. But if you appear in a digital newspaper article, it's on the internet for good. When people look up that topic, they just might come across you. So there's now a much longer lifetime for this and people could find it way into the future. Does that sound like a good way to get uh, the right clients to build authority? Does that sound good? Thumbs up? Yes? Absolutely fantastic. By the way, if you have any questions, you're most welcome to uh, drop them in the chat. And we're also going to have a bit of time for them later in our session. So feel free to drop those in. Great. So the Media Kit is great for journalists, reporters, vloggers, bloggers, podcasters, but it's also important for you. But who needs one? Well, if you don't need a media kit, and many people manage very well without one, then you, you would be fine without one. The only thing is, it does open a whole other door. So if you are building a personal brand, and that includes if you have just a job. I know there's a lot of hype about entrepreneurship and working for yourself and all of this nowadays. But you know what? There's no such thing as just a job. If you are in employment or you are looking for employment or you are eventually going to be in a position where you work through a corporate job and one day you want to be a consultant and then you want to work for yourself or if you are building your personal brand as an expert already, you're a speaker, you're an author, you're a consultant, you're a coach, or if you are building the brand for a startup or even an existing company, that media kit can serve any of those people well. Who doesn't need a media kit? Well, anybody who doesn't want to be discovered, doesn't want to be seen, doesn't want to be seen in the media. And if you are one of those people who doesn't like to be very visible, um, I, I, I'd love to say here, raise your hand, but I know if you haven't raised your hand, you're one of those people, right? We know how this game works. So if you're not, if you don't want to be in the limelight personally, think about whether your business, whether it is a registered business or a sole proprietor business, can have its own media kit as a brand in itself. Even if you are working as an expert, you don't have a business or a company yet, you can still create a brand kit or a media kit for the business that you are doing without having to be so much in the limelight. So who doesn't need a media kit? Well, who needs a media kit? Uh, my question is really almost, who doesn't? You don't need a media kit if you don't want any press attention. But if it can benefit you, then create that media kit, whether it's for your personal brand or for your business. And then where can you share your media kit for best results? Well, I'm going to throw this one back to you and let's see what do you guys have to say? Where do you think 
you could share your media kit and you are welcome. Ooh, very exciting. Very, very nice. Okay, so we can uh, come through to, uh, yes, uh, if you have any suggestions, where could you share your media kit? I think you all know there's one um, one place where I would definitely put that in. Kendra, yes, that's a good one. You could put it in for podcast applications. Last month, we were talking about podcast guesting and what you can do to create a podcast one sheet. But if you have a media kit, that is more than convincing enough to um, let people know. A podcast one sheet can be a little bit different because it can focus on the kinds of questions that people might ask you. But in a media kit, you could put the same kind of thing, like, for example, put questions that people could ask you in an interview or topics that you specialize in. Great. Susan says online publications and LinkedIn and Kendra's got another LinkedIn there. I can see my work here is done with my evil minions. Definitely. LinkedIn is the place because um, when you share your media kit on LinkedIn, you share it as a post and there is an option to feature it at the top of your profile. So when you do something like that, it also goes in. Another great thing you can do is have any of you, uh, oh, that's great, great, Corne, yes. Feel free to connect with anybody here on LinkedIn and, and share your link in the comments as well. Libby, that's a great one. Event organizers as well. So uh, on LinkedIn, um, you might be aware that there is a link you can share at the bottom of your profile. So when you share that link, you can be very picky. It might be a website, but even if you don't have a website and you have a couple of places where you are, like maybe you're on LinkedIn, maybe you have a TikTok, maybe you have a freebie that people can download, you can also include your media kit. If you use an application like Linktree, or uh, another service, I know Bitly also provides this. So there are a couple of services that let you build up a page that has all your different links. I see Corne is, is nodding very, very vigorously. Does that ring a bell for the rest of you? Linktree, right? A link folio is another one. So there are a couple of services where you don't need a whole website, especially if you're just starting out, but you can just list all your links, including things that might lead to a paid service that all go there. So very, very nice. Yes. And, and then I'd love to come back to Libby's event organizers because Libby, you're a speaker, right? And uh, for speakers and coaches and, and facilitators, people who have this kind of portfolio with what they do, um, this actually is a very, very good way to share that with them and also help them to take you seriously. That's what it comes down to. So again, for speakers, uh, like we had the podcast one sheet, speakers often have a speaker sheet. Um, for some speakers, I've created a speaker kit that is rather than one page, it's two pages, and it combines a lot of what a media kit would have and a speaker kit would have. So you get the best of both worlds. You don't have to do both of them, or you can have both and use them interchangeably, you know, as you see fit. So this is a very, very good one. Corneille's made a great comment there because Corneille, among many of her other talents, is very well informed about technology and technologies you can use in uh, education and business. And she mentions that on Bitly, you can track how many people are accessing your profile, right? So when uh, whenever you have a, a link on Bitly, which also is a short link, so that's extra handy, you can actually watch the analytics there. And a lot of that is available for free. They also help you make QR codes. So uh, Bitly offers a lot of that under one roof. And, uh, and you can get a, a lot of good value out of that even on their free plan. Awesome, right. So that's a, a bunch of places where you can share your, uh, your media kit for best results. Let me just run a quick check if you're seeing the where to share your media kit for best results and the media kit on your screen. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. 
So these are really great ways to share it. Um, if you do have a full website, of course, you can always include it there in one of your links. So there is plenty, plenty that you can do with this media kit. But there's one we haven't mentioned, and that is actually making it available to members of the press. So if you've attended our previous sessions and you can find them on YouTube about how to get media opportunities, then you can, or to get featured in the media, I think that one is called uh, how, how to get famous with media features or something like this. So um, if, if you are, want to be featured in the media, you can always keep an eye on what journalists are asking for and respond to that with a few quick bullets, but you include a link to your media kit. So it's a good idea to keep your media kit stored online somewhere where people can access it. For example, um, in a, if you're using Google Drive, keep a Google Drive version of your media kit online. So you have a nice link for that and you can use Bitly again. So there's a nice one, Cornet, to create a nice short media link. Kendra, I know you've been do, using a lot of Bitly recently and it really makes it easy because you can customize that link so it's something mem memorable instead of x7qryz73 right you can have your very catchy kendra's media link or media kit link uh, right there and so if you're approaching journalists who are looking for a st story include the link to your media kit rather than having to attach it because journalists hate attachments. Um, I, I mean, I hate to give them a bad rap because they're lovely, lovely people, but they work under tremendous pressure, right? So very often a journalist is on such a deadline that if you send them an attachment, they're just going to go, no, nope, swipe left, right? So uh, make it easy for them. You put in your little email, here are my bullet points, you're welcome to contact me, here's my media kit, bang, 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 and the link is there so they can find it if they want it, but it doesn't have to weigh them down. The biggest secret of a media strategy success is make it easy for people. If you're anything like me, your life is too complicated. Multiply that by 10 and you get the average day of a journalist, a blogger, a podcaster, a vlogger. They've got lots of stuff to do. Make their life easy and they will love you for it and they will come back for more. So that's a great way to share. That's more reactive. You can also be more proactive. So I never, I, I started doing a really old fashioned thing this weekend. Um, do any of you like reading the newspaper, like uh, the one that makes your hands dirty, the physical newspaper, especially on a Sunday morning? Yeah, I, I totally love that. And I know it's kind of old fashioned and I'm supposed to flick through it on my tablet. You know, there's something about that smell. And especially if you have to wrestle it in the wind, you Cape Townians understand exactly what I mean. I always had to fold my Cape Town times in quarters right, <laughs> so that I can read it and it doesn't blow away. Um, wrestling that together with your coffee and maybe a nice little croissant and, and reading the paper. But nowadays, I always read my paper with my phone in my hand so that I can go and connect with the journalists and uh, maybe, you know, compliment on them on their story or share their story online. They really appreciate that stuff. And that way you don't have to push, push, push. You support them. And when the opportunity comes, you can then say, by the way, here's my media kit. And you can be a bit more proactive about it so that you're top of mind when they're looking for a source. It's at times like these that you find out how evil my mind is, right? Okay, so when to use your media kit? You've heard a couple of examples here, but basically, if you have a nice short link to your media kit with a customized title like bit.ly forward slash uh, Marie's media kit, then you um, have a way to share it very easily. Another nice one is you can have the short link for not everybody likes this, but there are people who love to use a QR code. So you can also build a QR code for your media kit so that they can, that people can access it very easily. So then you have it everywhere. When you meet somebody who might be interested and get your, get yourself 
physically, I almost used another word than self, but get yourself physically to actual events where people want to meet you. Get to those physical events, especially after lockdown. We value this more than ever. And I used to loathe networking because it's hard. You know, I, I used to feel this is like a cocktail party where I have nothing to say. But when you have your elevator pitch ready and clear in your mind and you know what you do and you know who you want to meet, and you go to those networking events and you make your goal, not how many people can I meet? How many connections can I make? Try this goal. You say to yourself, how many people can I let, can I allow to feel really, really good at this event? Because other people feel just as nervous and shy and they have all their high school issues come up just like we do. We go to an event like that with one thing in mind, and that is make those people feel good. They're going to remember you. They're going to want to connect and they're going to be so curious about what you do. But all you really need to do is ask them the question, what do you do? And then you can listen to them bumble through their elevator pitch exactly the way you dread doing. And while they're doing that, you're quickly rehearsing yours. So you've got a little bit of extra time. And when they finally get around to, and what do you do? <laughs> you can knock it out of the park and, and really have a, a strong connection with them. Because now they've spoken first and you know what they need to hear. So when you go first, it's like, it's like chess, you know? If you play the white uh, pieces in chess, you get the first move, right? And if you are in a conversation, you actually don't want the first move because you want them to speak first, then you know what they want to hear and you can frame what you do in that light. So uh, if I may use you as an example, Kendra, with your financial coaching for small businesses, and for or freelancers and solopreneurs. So if you meet somebody and they are talking about their job and they say, but actually I can't wait to get out on my own, then you have an opening for them and you say, well, you know, when you do it, I um, work with many freelancers and uh, then um, talk to me because I help people to make that transition with their finances from working in a job to actually being a freelancer and managing your finances so that you can do it and even to make it possible. And then you have a, a membership or you have an offer or a consultation that people can try or a free ebook, whatever you do to show people what you do. And you can then give it to them in the form that they're interested in. So you go to those events, you never know who you might meet. You can share your media kit with those people and they can find out what, the, what you do. Some of them might be media. Some of them might increasingly be professionals and experts who have a blog or a podcast or a vlog of their own. So that is a great opportunity to share it. But the big when to use your media kit is not about when is the right time. It's when it happens, will you be ready? So have that link ready, have that QR code ready. Um, maybe keep a copy of the QR code on your phone or have the link where you can share it with people easily so that it's easy, easy, easy when it happens and you can do it without making a fuss. It's just so easy and people will be extremely impressed with what you can do because a lot of this is not rocket science. But the funny thing is, it's just the big corporations that use these tricks. Why aren't we using them? We're the good guys, right? So, uh, so take, take advantage of that. So now, how to use your media kit to land those ideal opportunities. You've heard of a lot of these opportunities already. It really is a matter of having it at hand and then listening because your media kit is not dynamic right it's probably going unless you share a dynamic document with them it's actually going to be something that um, is quite static now if you meet somebody who might be interested in what you do or a journalist who might be interested in covering what you do they might not feel that what's in your media kit matches them 
So how to use this to get the ideal media opportunities is you must build a bridge from what they do to what you offer. And that's where that interaction becomes very important. So that's really the biggest how about this. And finally, if you feel inspired and you'd like to go it alone and try out your own media kit, this link on the screen and that I will put in the chat in a second, if I can find my screens. You guys have heard that I'm a little bit disoriented today. Uh, ah, yes, great. So let me put that one in our chat. I am including quite a bunch of uh, links here. So the top one here is the Media Kit Guide and Templates from Canva. You'll see that in your chat. And um, when you click this link, you'll actually find a fabulous resource from them. Can you see Canva's Media Kit Creator in front of you? Great, thank you guys. So they show you the absolute basics of how to create a Media Kit. And um, I, I think most of the people in this Zoom room, possibly with the exception, yeah, with, with very few exceptions, most of us have what we refer to diplomatically as more life experience, right? Um, <laughs> and with more life experience, we're not always in touch with what the cool kids are doing nowadays. Now, here's what the cool kids are doing nowadays. They are creating media kits with Canva. And even if they just have a fashion blog, they set up an influencer kit to, that, that would scare you. So they say you can get the press to take notice with a beautifully designed media kit. They show you exactly how, step by step, five easy steps. And then they talk about how it works, why it's important and how to do it. And they even answer some questions, what makes it effective? And they even say, if you want to position yourself as an influencer, what do you do? And when you click these designs, there are bunches and bunches of templates, and they look like this. So let's say you're a fashion blogger. Now you can go and use this template. And if you don't like it, or whatever you want to change, you're going to put in your information here. So you can change the photo, and you put in your own photograph. Let's see who we've got here. Where's Kendra? I think Kendra, I think you're in here somewhere. Okay, I'll, I'll put it in one of my influencery grumpy pictures, right? So there we go. And then I move this around, simply change the details I want. I can change the wording. I can change my brand. Um, uh, design, etc. So if you've used Canva before, you'll know exactly what a wonderful tool this is to do exactly what you need. But this is basically completely customizable, drag everything around. And for those of us who don't have 5 million Instagram followers, you know, we, we adjust the numbers. If you only have 10 people, you know, focus on your strengths. If social media is not your place right now, just put your link. You know, you don't have to put numbers. You adjust this to what you need. There's a quick about section. There's a quick section about the blog. Now, um, this uh, Agnes Kiley, is a maybe not the most perfect example for you. So you can look at something like a little bit more of, a, um, yeah, they're all influencers and models. I mean, like we're, we are in exactly the right ballpark here, right? Um, this one actually talks, okay, you want me to do a post for you? It's gonna cost you $300. You want me to do a video review of your product? That's $800. Cheeky, hey? But this is how our, our next generation is going to be making their money. If, uh, if remember when we did that, um, the little talk in primary school, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think the new answer is probably a TikTok influencer. And the great thing is you can do that when you're 13. So <laughs> you might need parental permission for some of the things. So uh, here's another content creator. And again, 
you very simply, here's a collaborations fee. So we might not have collaborations fees. Um, personally, I would guard against including any fees here because it does bind you. And you might want to be open to always giving a really high fee and rather giving a discount if people do work with you. So I wouldn't put fees out there, but it depends you know, if, if that's something that's helpful for you. If you have a brand, like a little coffee shop, here's a lovely sample for them. Another thing you can use, if you have been in the media before or you have received awards, et cetera, you can add those in. So, so the bottom line about these templates is find something that works for you. Here's more of a tech startup-y design, design house kind of look. So you go in and you explore under design what kinds of um, templates you want. So you'll see hundreds and hundreds of templates here and well, maybe not hundreds and hundreds, but there's so much that you can do and you can go and customize it to really say what you need to say. And um, yes, let's go take a look. What's next? Well, creating your magne magnetic media kit is then the next frontiers. I'm sure you've seen a couple of ideas that get you really excited. And you might also see some things where you go, how can I ever do that? No, whoa, and I have to do this too. Well, this is why the Media Strategy Mafia is there. So if you are not yet a member and you decide to join today, you have free access for a month and you'll be able to join us tomorrow night for a masterclass where you learn the exact how to of building your uh, magnetic media kit. The next week on, on Thursday evening, we have an implementation session. So you can either do this on your own or you can come and join us, say hello in the group, let us know how you're doing and go and work on your media kit for the next 40 minutes or so. And we uh, come back and you can share your progress. So you don't have to do it alone. Because I know how often there's a session like this, and I'm so guilty that I go to a session like this and I go, yes, I'm going to do it. And I kind of leave it in my inbox and I leave it on my calendar and then it doesn't happen and then I forget about it. So here's a great opportunity to join the Media Strategy Mafia so that you can learn more about how to create that kit tomorrow night. Next week, go and implement the week after that, we have a Q&A session, so you can ask more about your media kit or any other media strategy issues. And the week after that is another implementation session. So uh, if that sounds appealing, and if you feel you have enough, of course, you can go ahead with what you have there. There are some great resources in the chat. But if the Media Strategy Mafia could be the answer for you, you will find the link to join there. And um, when you uh, get started, you have 30 days free access so you can get this whole cycle um, free of charge and just give it a try. See if the Media Strategy Mafia works for you, if it's something that can help you get your media kit on the road. And if after 30 days your media kit is sorted and you've had what you need, you can go on your merry way and your subscription. If you find that it brings you value, you have an opportunity to stay on at a very, very reasonable rate for a group coaching session that uh, gives you value every week and a full library of resources of all past sessions. So that is an opportunity you're welcome to make use of. And I will share this link again in the LinkedIn event where most of you would have found this session. And that leaves us two questions and answers. Let me get back on our screen so I can kind of look you in the eye. There we go. I hope you've got a little bit of extra inspiration. And if you have any questions, you're very, very welcome, or comments, or undertakings, or big plans, you're very welcome to share them. Uh, do keep in mind that um, if you unmute yourself, that, uh, then uh, you will come up on the screen of the recording. So if you're feeling shy, you can simply put your, uh, in, your message in the chat. And alternatively, you can turn off your camera. 
but if you're not feeling shy and you'd like to introduce yourself and say hi and share your questions or your comments, you're very, very welcome to do that. Yes, thanks, Maria. I think this was really helpful. Maybe a question and a comment uh, for a media kit to get started. And I'm sure we all want to get started with something like a CV or a resume and a complete LinkedIn profile, maybe with a short two minute introduction where you share your elevator pitch and put it in a Bitly link. Would that be a good start? Oh, yes. Well, um, now you're, you're opening up a whole other gateway there, Cornet, because what you can do with your media kit is actually make your link to a folder. So let's say you're using a Google Drive folder, and then you can actually put in this two-page media kit PDF, and then you have photographs for the press and a full CV and uh, all your links. So that thing like your LinkedIn profile link, um, having that inside your two-page media kit PDF is definitely an asset, but you can also share other resources that can take people there. So yes, you can actually have a folder that is a media kit with more resources, including this one. So it really becomes like the old fashioned, like my grandfather's dossier, right, that they would put on somebody's desk with all the different things, the photographs, the, um, the bio, the, the different uh, materials that you can use. Yes. Great. If I may ask another question or make a comment, this could also be a good opportunity for those of us looking for more clients or for a new job. This is uh, giving a little bit of extra information and differentiate yourself by going to physical businesses or promoting mm. yourself online or, yeah, amount that... of opportunities. Definitely. And it's a very subtle way to say to potential clients, this is what I share with the media, you know? So you're not actually pitching the client. You're basically saying, you know, this is the league I play in. And, and it's, uh, I mean, clients who want to work with you will want to work with you. They'll come and grab you at your ankles and say, please help me. Um, they, they don't need to be, oh, by the way, we've all experienced this thing, right? Where people are, uh, especially on LinkedIn, uh, I can do this for you. I can update your LinkedIn profile or I can update your YouTube channel. Or uh, the, the nice new one is they actually send you a screenshot of all the things they think should be improved. Um, and yes, there are people who might go for that. For me, that's, a, that's an immediate, you know, remove this connection. But um, people who want to work with you are going to reach out. They don't need to be pushed, but they might need the stepping stones to make the connection. So that's a beautiful way to do it. Very, very nice. Thanks, Cornet. And in the chat, Susan is saying inspiration and trepidations. And it's a lovely one to insource. If you work with uh, graphic designers, if you work with virtual assistants, or it's a very nice project. If you know a virtual assistant or a graphic designer that you would like to test out. So you can give them a small project that is, here's my information. Can you put it into a nice graphic for me? So if you're not, if you're, if you don't feel comfortable on the graphics side, or um, some of us might not feel so comfortable with the wording that we have, but a, a good virtual assistant will be able to do both of those. So it's a, it's a great kind of a test job for for a VA, and uh, a lot of this is going to challenge you to really refine the wording so if you're battling with a wording put together the words you want to use the words you want to share run them through well by a few humans if you can if you've got a couple of humans in your life read it out loud read it out loud to yourself on your voice notes and 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 listen to it again um, ask somebody that you know you know is is this a good reflection but also go and run it through grammarly grammarly.com will give you a very good rundown so uh, grammarly.com will help you spot if there are any issues in the language and by the way, you can add 
Grammarly to your browser and it will check everything you ever write, which for me is a bit of a lifesaver because I tend to type in haste or forget to use my glasses. And um, then very bad things can happen. So, so Grammarly can, can help with that. And if like me, you tend to like very big long words and long sentences, Hemingway.com is another gift. It helps you to keep sentences short and to the point and highly, highly readable because people on the internet, like us, we're all lazy, right? So make it easy, make it easy for people. Great stuff. Susan, yes, thank you very much for your comments. And of course, all these slides are made on Canva. Canva, 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 absolutely brilliant opportunity to um, uh, just tap a wonderful resource. And by the way, if somebody makes your Canva template for you, you can actually ask them to share that link with you. So you can either collaborate. I think you need to be paying for Canva for that. But even on free Canva, you're able to edit their template. So um, you can take over the template that they've created for you and be in control of it. So it's not in their hands afterwards. Great. Have I missed any questions? I see Corne also says, I'm a first mover. This is about that chess move or at a networking event, right? So, so go first and, um, and shorten to the point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our world is overcomplicated. So the shorter, the simpler, the sweeter we can do it, the better. Libby has a question, and I promise Libby is not planted here to ask this question. She asked, how is your monthly, how, how much is the monthly Mafia Mastermind? So the Media Strategy Mafia is, uh, it's four sessions a month that you can attend live. Two of those are recorded and you get access to all the past libraries. And uh, that is 19 US dollars a month. And the first 30 days is free. And the best thing I have to admit, you know, there's lots of nifty stuff and nifty knowledge and resources, et cetera, in the Media Strategy Mafia. But I think one of the biggest assets is becoming the people there. So if you want to just have that opportunity to connect with some amazing experts, entrepreneurs, uh, fledgling speakers, some more experienced speakers sometimes, uh, coaches. That's a lovely place just to go and get that positive support once a week. The meetings are from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Susan, thank you very much for joining us. I see you're on your way. Yeah, so it's 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, South African time. That's 5.30 to 7, 5.30 to 6.30 um, universal UTC, UTC, yeah, you know, that stuff, UTC time. That's it. Anything else? I think this is uh, Luisa Kambile who's there. Lovely to have you with us, Luisa. Right. Anything else? Any other questions, comments? Great stuff. I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have anything else you'd like to ask off camera, then uh, you're welcome to stay on for a few minutes. Thank you all so very much for joining us. And I hope your media kit is going to be serving you very, very well. Thank you all. And hope to see you in the media strategy mafia meeting. More info if you're watching this later in the description. You've been listening to the League of Visionaries podcast by Yazi Media, proudly brought to you by Totally Morpheus. Subscribe to the League of Visionaries podcast here on your favorite podcasting platform and follow Yazi Media on LinkedIn to find out more about how you can share your visionary message with the world. If you are a visionary, chances are you are also a leader. But what is your current leadership state? The way you are leading right now, your default setting, if you will. The Egg 3 Leadership Assessment helps you to understand the way you lead, your strengths, and your potential challenges as a leader. And most importantly, how to create your unique leadership legacy. It's fast, it's fun, it's free. It's the Egg 3 Leadership Assessment from Totally Morpheus. And when you take this assessment, you will get an instant report right away, pointing the way to your living leadership legacy.
Find the Egg 3 Leadership Assessment now at totallymorpheus.com.